Hello, welcome to this episode of The Next Page. The Next Page is a program that was created and is supported by the Wayne County Literacy Coalition and Birth to Five. These two organizations have come together to support The Next Page as a program that promotes literacy in all of its forms throughout Wayne County. Today we have a special show focusing on literacy resources. We've been talking for the past several months about different kinds of literacy, and today, like in the last episode, we're gonna work to connect you with resources, information, and places that you, the viewers, can go to explore and enact all the different forms of literacy that we've been talking about. Today, we're focusing on the excellent, wonderful, free, accessible resources at the Morrison Reeves Library. And joining me in this segment is Madeline Helzer Howard. And Madeline, you are the Senior Coordinator of Children's Services at the library. I've probably either given you a promotion or a demotion in your <laughs> title, but in any case, I know that you are the person at Morrison Reeves who coordinates children's programming. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to our program, The Next Page. I hope that everything's been going well for you at the library since you've been with us the last time. Yeah, it has. Thanks, Angie. Beautiful. Tell us what your actual title is, <laughs> Madeline, and a little bit about what you do every day at the library. Okay, my actual title is Senior Library Assistant. And every day at the library, I come up with all the programs for the kids and I schedule them. And I determine what is needed by the community and try to find fun and creative ways to meet that need by programming. That is awesome. Our program focuses and showcases on many speakers and guests who talk about childhood literacy, the importance of that, the connection between reading when you're young and adult literacy later in our lives. So give us an overview of some of the programming offered at Morrison Reeves, specifically directed at children and youth. Some of the programs that we do are weekly story times. We always have weekly story times. And once a month, we have a music garden for the really little ones to connect that music because music stimulates the same part of the brain that language does. Um, and we also offer a homeschool art program once a month. And so that takes the fine arts and links it with literacy and learning for the older children as well. Um, we also have other outstanding programs not continuing. So in March, we're going to have a spring break book bingo. Ooh. And since spring break is two weeks this year, one, one week for the private schools and one week for the public schools, we're extending it. And they'll get a bingo card and they'll have little activities. And once they mark off the activities to make a bingo, they can get a prize. Um, so that'll be really fun. Excellent. What kinds of activities are on that bingo card, Madeline? Uh, things like... <laughs> You know, read a book in the bathtub with no water. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you know, make a fort, read to a teddy bear, listen to an audio book, stuff like that. Beautiful. So if you're a young person at home, mom and dad are at work, you're kind of there on spring break, this kind of bingo could really keep you hopping. Right, right. What else is going on for children and youth there in the next few months? Um, in April, we're having a program called One World, One Plate, and it's going to focus on different cultures and food traditions, and we're inviting families to come and explore all these different cultures and traditions, um, and that really enriches their understanding of the world, which helps them with literacy. Literacy is a family affair, right? So if we engage everyone in the literacy endeavor, I just think it's a win-win. Yeah. Now, you mentioned food. That's a real soft spot for me. Talk a little <laughs> bit more about that, Madeline. Will families come to the library and prepare foods? Will we eat food or will we read about food? <laughs> we'll have a sample of foods is what we'll have. Um, so at each station, we'll have five major countries. I think Japan, India, uh, and a couple others. I'm not taking Beautiful. the lead on that one. But the families will come in and sample some of the very specific tastes for each culture that they don't really get to experience every day. Nice. So. And then will there be publications, books, other resources maybe that we can dive into to learn more about this culture that the food has enticed us about? <laughs> Absolutely. There will be, um, be a slideshow about all the cultures, and there will be books on each table for families that 
they can check out those books and cookbooks that they can take home and explore further. Oh, so. that's very nice. What's the time frame for this in terms of, is it evening, afternoon? Right, it's going to be April 11th, which is a Saturday, and it's going to be 1 to 2.30. Oh, so it'll wonderful. be right after lunch, so you kind of like snacks after lunch kind of thing. <laughs> Fabulous, it's, it's on a Saturday. So even families who have both working parents Absolutely. can grab those kids, come down. It sounds like a wonderful afternoon of family fun. So we've got bingo in March. How would I get involved in that bingo? If I'm a young person or a parent listening today, how do I get in the action? So once spring break starts I, on March 20th, we will put a link on the website where you can just print out a bingo card or you can come into the library and get a bingo card to work from. Nice. So if the weather snafus us, which we hope it won't, right. but we can still participate <laughs> in the bingo. So we print that out, we do the activities, mm -hmm. and then would we come and cash in at the library mm -hmm. once we make a bingo? <laughs> yep, that's how it works. And we get to scream bingo, right? Yes. Maybe not, <laughs> depending on the volume, you know, of, of what's appropriate. <laughs> Appropriate, we can scream bingo. Right, right, right. So tell me a little bit more about then what might be happening later in the spring or early summer for our children. So um, later in the spring, usually we kind of take a break in May to get ready for the summer reading program, ah. which will be June 1st to August 1st this Beautiful. year. So very easy to remember, June 1st to August 1st. And we're partnering with COPE again this um, year for their Go Outside and Play program. And we're also going to do a partnership with JUCO, bringing the reading and playing program out to the kids at JUCO that can't necessarily get into the library. Fantastic, I'm glad that you mentioned that though because if you're a, an adult and you can ride a bus, the bus comes to the library, yes. yes? So we could at least get there in that way. And the library has hours on the weekend as well as through the week. Um, Madeline, how would I find out library hours and how to get there and all the specifics? You've excited me today about getting there. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I'm not sure about the bus schedule because I live out in the country, so I drive. <laughs> sure. But you can find the hours online on our awesome. website. Um, awesome. Yeah, so they're, they're 9.30 to 8, Monday through Thursday, 9.30 to 6 on Fridays, so you can get there after work, Excellent. and then 9.30 to 4 on Saturdays. Beautiful. And are there charges for any of these programs you've described or the food that night. <laughs> <laughs> no, all of the programs that I offer through the Children's Department are always free. We want to make them accessible to everybody so oh, everyone has the amazing. same opportunities. That is amazing. And if I come down there and I don't have a library card, does that disqualify me from participating <laughs> in all this? Absolutely not. You could come from New Jersey <laughs> and still attend our programs and our reading Sorry. programs even. We don't have any limitations on that. Oh, that's beautiful. If I want to check out books though, I need to get a library card. How hard is that and how do I do that? It's pretty easy to get a library card. You have to live in Wayne Township and you have to have an ID or some sort of form of picture identification with a proof of your current address and then you can get a library card. And if you live out of town you can also get a plaque card which is a public library access card um, for a fee. Oh that's wonderful. It's probably not a very big fee. You've given us such great information today to really enact our plan toward higher degrees of literacy, yeah. <laughs> especially for our kids. Thank you so much for joining us today, Madeline. Thanks, Angie. Hello, welcome back to the next page. In this segment, my guest is Alex Car... Sarkeesian. See, Alex, I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> Let me see if I could get your title correct. Alex is the audio visual manager of stuff, aka the movie guy at Morrison Reeves Library. <laughs> Alex, thank you for coming today. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to invite you this afternoon because you're going to talk with us about a, an exciting new program that the library has launched and it's a web-based program so our viewers who can't get to the library for some reason or another can access this. It's a program called, and they know I love food so you'll have to help me here, it's called Mango. 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 But it's not edible. It's not. <laughs> Alex, tell us about Mango. Mango is an online language learning program, um, sort of similar to Rosetta Stone, only it's free through the library. It's 
available 24-7 through our website. You just go through our website, you'll sign up with your library card number and an email address, make an account, and then you can learn all sorts of foreign languages, um, whether it be something like French or German, maybe getting ready for a trip to Europe, or um, in my experience, I'm Armenian, and so they actually have Armenian on there as an option, a very small you know, country, small language. Well, not a small language, but a, a small country <laughs> with a very big language I'm learning. So I'm learning how to speak Armenian so I can speak to my grandparents and things like that. That's so beautiful. there's all these different options. They even have fun options like um, pirate. So for Talk Like a Pirate Day, you can learn pirate. I'm hoping they're going to add uh, other fun ones like maybe Klingon or Elvish, but we'll see what happens down the line. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to control my laughter <laughs> so I don't fill the microphone with it, but I love that. And you know I want to go, arg, so I'm just going to exactly. do it and get it out of my system. <laughs> pirate? I love that, yeah. Alex. They, they, <laughs> it's a really, really fun program. It makes... I always had trouble learning language. My brain doesn't quite work that way. I was always much better at math than I was at learning uh, German yes. in high school. <laughs> so uh, this one, it makes it a lot more fun, so it doesn't feel like a chore. There's a lot of uh, fun things incorporated. There's also movies on there, too. So you can watch a foreign language movie with subtitles and really sort of get a feel for the... Uh, the flow of the language and you can then stop, rewind, and it'll go through language lessons in the movie to sort of help you understand the conversations they're having. That is so cool. So even if I'm a really visual learner or I'm a person who needs to apply that learning right away, it sounds like Mango is for me. Yes. So, okay, I've got to ask the questions that our viewers are thinking about. How easy is this to use, Alex? It's very easy. It's all uh, picture-based, it's all very intuitive. Um, once you get the library card number and your email in there, you've got an account. It is super easy to get in there, pick up a program, start, re uh, start learning, uh, switch to another program. It's very, very easy. And the other nice thing is there are uh, free apps you can download either on your tablet or your phone, so you can take it with you wherever you are. So if I'm on the plane, somewhere and suddenly I was like, ah, I need to really brush up on my... Armenian. Armenian. <laughs> Now's the time to do it. Or I know people who they have their headphones in at the gym and they'll just, you know, be learning language while they're working out. Oh, that just sounds fabulous. Okay, so when you say it's easy to use, does that mean I'm going to be pulling down menus, clicking on, am I typing in text boxes or listening? What am you I want, doing? You'll be listening and repeating. So you'll you'll click on a particular language and it'll show all the different um, lessons. Okay. And once you pick your lesson, it'll start going through and you will just sort of click along or follow along. Each section is timed, so you just move along at your own pace. So it's all self-paced. And it'll play it. You'll listen. You can repeat if you want to. You can repeat in your head if you're somewhere out and about and you don't want to just be <laughs> shouting out strange things in foreign Speaking languages. Italian. Yeah. <laughs> just randomly in the Walmart. Exactly. Although that would be interesting. That would be fun. I would like it, especially if you're on the spaghetti aisle. So <laughs> are there little self-tests or self-quizzes along the way so you can gauge how you're doing, how you're what learning? What it'll do is um, the different lessons, they build upon each other. Okay. So you'll learn let's say, uh, one sentence, okay. and it'll break it up and you'll get the different words from that sentence. Uh -huh. Then once you've got that down, you'll maybe move on to a second lesson, which will have a different one. But what'll happen is it'll start peppering in questions from the first lesson ah. to see how much you're retaining. <laughs> and if you're able to Beautiful. remember and recall, you keep moving on. If you don't, maybe it's time to go review the first lesson again and uh, go from there. Will Mango gently nudge me toward a review or does it somehow let me know what I need? Does it teach as well as uh, self-guide me? It's it's more of a self-guidance okay. in that um, I found going through they would ask me a question I wouldn't know. I'd be like, oh, all right. Maybe after this lesson, I'm going to go back to the first lesson again and brush up again. Got but it. when I do, then it, it really starts hammering at home. And I don't go through the entire first lesson. I just sort of skip around. I 
get what I remember, and then I move on back to where I was in the third lesson or fourth lesson. Okay, curveball for mango. Okay. What if I come here and I am not a native English speaker? Is there an English on mango? There are so many ESL programs on mango. There's uh, English for Spanish speakers, there's English for French speakers, there's English for Arabic speakers. So it covers the whole gamut. Beautiful. And did I hear correctly that this is free? Totally free through the library's oh, website. Nice. Mango is an independent program, and if you find them on your own, it'll want you to pay, or they um, will have a option where it says, type in your zip code, and we'll tell you the closest library that offers Mango for free. Ah. And then you can find us or whoever's closest to you. Um, but if you go through our website, you just go straight through, it'll ask for your library card number, and then you get in for free and you don't have to pay because the library is covering all that for oh, you. Oh, that is fabulous. But I will need a library card. You'll need a library card. So if, if I just hopped on the website without a library card, can I explore anything about Mango or will I just get a page and I will need to log in? You'll get a page and you'll get a little intro about Mango and a little information, but you won't be able to move forward to the lessons or anything like that without a library card. But it isn't that tough to get a library card. I need to come in person to the library right. card to, to the library. I'm not going to come to a library card, Alex, <laughs> but I'm probably going to need to come face to face to the library to get a library card. We right. don't have a virtual card system yet. No, we don't have a virtual card system yet. Uh, we just need you to come in, bring a picture ID and something that shows you're living here in Richmond. So if your driver's license is all up to date, that's great. If not, you know, bring a utility bill or a piece of mail that's been sent to you or uh, lease agreement, something like that. Super easy to get a library card. And once you do, the, the options are endless. You can use anything in the library or now with Mango or some of our downloadable services, you can use the library from your home anytime you want. Oh, that is fabulous. So if I can just get in there for that one time to get started with that, I can hook into Mango and learn all kinds of world languages. Exactly. I could even learn pirate. <laughs> you could even learn pirate. And did you say there was Klingon or that Not maybe yet. Klingon is coming? I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping they incorporate more Klingon. <laughs> maybe some Elvish, you know, because I'm the movie guy, so I, I want to know exactly what's going on in Lord of the Rings. I don't trust all the subtitles. I want to... <laughs> I would love it. I would love to see the subtitles for Star Trek and Klingon. Let's there aim for that, Alex. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today today on the next page. Thank you for having me. <laughs>
and we check them in communication, speech, uh, problem solving, fine mold, fine motor, right. gross motor, and personal social. And um, the way we reach parents is they can call us. We have brochures throughout the community. Um, I set up at health fairs, um, the baby fair at Reed. We also set up at the um, county fair. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes doctors will refer mm -hmm. parents to call us. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're more than happy. We, we go and we get the call. We um, pick out the right ASQ because they are in different ages. They Correct. go from um, one month up to five and a half years. So we can start screening children at one month old. Yes. Okay, that's important. Okay. Yes, because the earlier that we can catch any possibility of a delay or sure. um, a concern, then the better we can intervene. Sure. And early okay. intervention is key. Absolutely. Okay. So what does it look like when you go into the home and you actually use the screening with a, with a family? Ha, what does it look like? How does that go? Give us an example of what that might happen. Okay, I get down on the floor and I'm at the child's eye level and I have a bag full of tricks basically <laughs> I am playing with the child uh -huh. um, we're stacking blocks we are um, I will ask the child you know where's the ball at in a book and see if the child can point to the ball and as they get a little older I'll say you know what is that and the child will say ball and then there's like a picture of a child taking a bath and so as they're older what's that child doing and the, the child will tell me um, he's taken a bath. Sometimes they don't have those words. So that can be an indication of, you know, a, a speech delay. So, so the two things here it sounds like are number one is um, it, it's, it's age appropriate, right? Yes. So the questions are supposed to be age appropriate and intellectual development appropriate. And, and that's how mm -hmm. you kind of determine where a child sits. Okay. So what kinds of things, when you mentioned, you know, when I'm trying to identify fine and gross motor skills, um, what kinds of things exactly do you do um, to, to do that? Okay. And, 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 um, and why is that important, too, by the way? Go ahead. Okay. Um, we will have the child unbutton. I've got like a doll that has the buttons. And we want to know if the child can handle buttons. Um, we will have them catch a ball, throw a ball overhand. Um, those are important. Their gross and fine motor skills are just as important as their problem solving and um, de developmentally. Okay. Okay. So now let's say we, we spend some time with a family and we find out that there's some, some slight deficits here. Typically, what are the kinds of deficits that you identify? And then what kind of referrals do you make as a result of those identifications? Okay, the number one um, deficit that I find in children is speech. Uh, okay. And that's usually taken care of. Um, if they're under three, I will do a referral to first steps. And if they're three and over, I will call the um, Crestdell School and they will do testing on them and get, maybe get them in preschool to where they're gonna get speech. In some cases, they may go to Reed Hospital for speech services. Okay. And um, sometimes you may find um, a personal social issue. And so I refer them to Birth Fives playgroups. So, so when you just so, so the folks at home understand when you say a personal social issue, how might that show itself? Okay, um, the child not taking turns. Um, the child not talking, being, you know, very, very shy and, and kind of withdrawn. Okay. Um, different things like that, um, showing stranger anxiety at an inappropriate age. Um, so, you know, we will refer them to go to the library, to toddler time, um, birth to five play groups. Um, sometimes join a, a daycare where they can be exposed to other children and realize, you know, that there's a, there should be interaction instead of just parallel play. Okay. So you identified, um, you identified the social and the speech. Mm -hmm. um, can we talk a little bit about 
identifying, let's say, some neurological or some physical kind of delays? What, what kind okay. of things are we looking at there and, and what kind of um, referrals are we going to make in those cases? Okay. Um, I will have a child um, draw lines okay. and I look at how they hold the pencil um, if they're having problems. Um, the whole time that I am screening a child, I am looking at them pretty much from head to toe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they may have webbing in their fingers. Um, this, be, be, what is that exactly? Explain that real quick. Okay, that yeah. is where the fingers have the skin okay. that's grown in there, and that may be causing them some issues to, to where they're not holding on to the okay. pencil correctly. Um, a child, as far as speech, they, they could have a be tongue-tied where their tongue is, you know, just kind of hooked at the, to the tip. Um, some children, um, they can't hop on one foot. Um, they may not be able to hop forward. All of these things are very important. So if we find a child who's having some difficulty, for example, with balance, as you say, mm -hmm. can't hop on one foot, and some of these other what appear to be muscular or, or physical kinds of things, mm -hmm. What kind of a referral do we make for them, typically? Okay, I do a referral to First Steps, and then First Steps goes in, and we are screening. We're just skimming the surface. First Steps goes in, and they do a deep evaluation. And um, so they may refer the child for um, physical, occupational, um, speech, whatever th therapy, developmental therapy that they see, they may um, refer the child to the doctor, to a specialist. Um, I had a child where mom asked me, I asked her, you know, do you have any concerns? And she said, you know, my child kind of limps. Well, um, I referred her to first steps. I noticed the, the gait and one of her legs was shorter than the other. Oh my gosh. Okay. So she had to have a shoe build up. Mm -hmm. Our doctors are so busy now. That they don't that, pick up on that stuff. Yeah, they don't pick up on a lot of yeah. the little things. Yeah, so one of the things I'm, I'm hoping that, that will come of this particular segment for us is um, that folks will realize that it's important for them to outreach, to reach out to us, um, to get a developmental evaluation, um, it doesn't, uh, you know, the, the, the kinds of developmental delays that both you and Birth to 5 c um, cross cultures, they cross generations, they cross um, economic groups. So it's really important for everybody to go ahead and do that. Um, I think that's all the time we have. Um, I think I might bring you back and we can talk about this a whole lot more. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining us. And that's all for this segment of The Next Page.